Rare fraction, always rare fraction, right? yeah, always in the middle of action. Right, okay. Right. The other stuff after the end of next week will be sand and, and Devil's Lane, I think. Right. The broom will be done, the Peterborough will be, all be done as well. Right. So, yeah. They're early, aren't they? Yeah, they're really on the ball this year. Is there any such thing as a normal day in Danny Fairbrass's life? <laughs> um, there is absolutely no such thing as a normal day in my life, but I like it like that. Um, I've designed it like that and I would be bored to tears if it was repetitive. Um, it, does, um, it does come on top sometimes and it does, it does overwhelm me at times. Um, uh, but I, I love the variety and um, I love the the, uh, the amount of different people that I have to work with, um, all of whom have got something special to give. If there isn't such a thing as a normal as a normal day, perhaps talk us through um, a day when you come into the office. What 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 happens? Yeah. Um, a day when I come into the office, I'll probably get here about nine-ish, something like that. Um, normally say my hellos to the people downstairs. It can take me two hours to get upstairs um, to, to my desk in the embryo office. I don't, I don't have my own office. I don't, um, I don't really sort of believe in that hierarchy, uh, CEO, MD, lever chair, come in and sit yourself down, son, all that sort of. I don't, I don't, I don't care for that at all. I, you know, equality is really important to me. So being in with everybody else, um, operating on a level is really important but so yeah I'll, I'll, I might go in and see the sales guys um, just for a bit of banter really more than anything else um, sometimes I'm dropping bits off to people um, you know that um, I've used on a shoot or something like that um, it can take 10 minutes it can take two hours and then um, uh, upstairs same thing again product development um, uh, creative services which is all kinds of media um, and then finally I might get to sit down at my desk. Um, I get dragged into loads and loads of different conversations that I hadn't planned on before I walked through the door. So, um, and, and that just, it just goes on all day. Generally the things that I have on my list of things to do don't get done while I'm here. They get done at home or when I'm fishing or whatever. And you, along those lines, I mean, I've freestyled a little bit as we go and just things occur, but you don't switch off, do you? Like talk us through what goes on in your brain, like, <laughs> For tw around the 24 hour clock? What goes on in my brain for 24 hours? Um, too much is the short answer. Um, I'm always thinking, if I get up in the middle of the night to use the loo, it might take me two hours to get back to sleep because it's like, oh, I need to do that. And oh, what about if we did this? And oh, uh, you know, that's, that didn't work as well as it should have worked. And you know, that needs to be better. And 
or we could do this on this particular shoe and uh, so yeah I, d I don't switch off at all I, I, I never have and I don't think I ever will I'm I'm working on it a lot more now um, uh, we've got coaches here at, at, um, at the company now business coach that's come in to basically help all of the management um, be more effective leaders more effective managers and also um, create a bit more headspace for each of us individually because especially me personally I could I could go insane with all the thoughts going around in my head so yeah I'm I am as I get older I I, I um you know those 20 hours of thinking a day aren't healthy so I you know I'm trying to dial it back a little bit but it is hard um are you uh you know when, when you say about say for business coach when you talk about things like that does he, are you aware of how far the business has come to the point where all of a sudden people might be quite surprised to know that you have such things in a fishing company? Um, I don't really, I don't, I'm not really present to how far we have come because it's, it's like seeing a child grow up. You see them every day and all of a sudden they're 16 and, you know, um, and that's what Calder's like. Calder has been my baby. So, um, it, it, yes, it's grown and grown and grown, but because it's at such a gradual rate, um, it just seems normal. Like, you know, I, I, I couldn't imagine back then, 25 years ago, being where I am now. Um, I wanted to be there, you know, and I felt I could be there, but, but I had no comprehension of what it has grown to, you know. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking forwards always and always trying to be the best that I can be and I think I think that ethos runs throughout the whole company um, and as we get bigger and bigger you know you're managing you know there's whatever it is 120 130 staff spread all across Europe now that's 120 different personalities that you want to try and get the best from and make sure that they feel valued and everything else and that that is a skill and it's not one that I was trained to do nor were any of you know the um, the managers here so you know, yeah, um, having coaching in that respect uh, is not something I'd, I'd thought was ever going to happen, but I think we're at a position now where it's important that it does. Um, just to bring us back around to the, your, your sort of day, um, what are your favourite moments from, uh, you know, generally from a day in the office? My favourite moments are definitely the interaction with the pe different people, whether it be banter with Spooner downstairs about something that's gone on the week before or a banter with the other boys in sales about fish that have been lost or caught or whatever to upstairs with Damien and, and Tom and Thomas talking about product development and when, when you get a, a load of creative minds together that are all you know have all got something really valuable to contribute um, that, that that's that's when the magic happens and I, I love being part of that and any sort of problem solving work that goes on here, whether it's to do with a new product or whether it's to do with marketing or to do with sales or whatever, that, that process I really, really enjoy. So that's, that's probably my highlight, I would say. What, um, what, give us a couple of things that you think people outside, people watching this, might not know about the way Corda works or you know, what don't they see about your day, Dan, that, that you know, perhaps um, isn't well understood? I think the main thing that's not well understood is that I, I don't come in in a chauffeur-driven Bentley or whatever they are um, with petals thrown in front of my feet and ushered into the door on a throne and sit in some high office barking orders at people. I think that's... I don't understand how people get that impression of me. I really don't because I, I'm really conscious to be the complete and utter opposite of that. And uh, as I've said, equality is really important to me, you know. I, I, we've got a set of values that um, that are posted all around the building that I work by and live by, and equality is one of those things. And, and that means that everyone's point of view needs to be considered. Everyone's equal. We're, you know, all the boys and, and girls that work here. You know, if I was in a car accident, it'd be their blood that'd be saving my life. Do you know what I mean? So, as a human being, why are they any less valuable than I am? And I can't stand that. I've, I've made it so I'm better than you attitude. I hate it, hate it. So I think a, a lot of people are surprised when they spend any time with me outside of being in front of the camera, um, that I am like that. 
and those things are really important to me and I'm not so some Alan Sugar egomaniac money obsessed monster you know that shouts and screams and gets his own way all the time so I think that's probably the that's probably the thing that people would be most surprised about the amount of banter and um, silliness and I'm the company clown at the end of the day Damien's the one who he's the enforcer you know my right hand man um, you know he counts every halfpenny um, he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, director of operations here for the UK, and he does an absolutely fantastic job of it. And that gives me the freedom and the breathing space to be a bit stupid, and um, hold call, and, you know, um, you know, tell some stories about my own misgivings and uh, my own failures in fishing and everything else. Um, but at the same time, rev up the successes and make the most of those special moments when something good happens. You know, so, yeah, I suppose that's the. You know, me making my own cup of tea and not ordering people to do it and making everybody else a cup of tea as well. I don't, maybe people wouldn't expect that. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I just, I just like being one of the gang. Has it ever hurt you, that the, this kind of perception from the outside? The, the outside perception, yes, of, of um, which has been completely wrong. Yeah, yeah it, does, it does hurt, it does sting, you know, and... Um, I think I, I, you know, being in the trade a long time now, I've sort of toughened up to it. I was a real softy when I started. I thought everybody was just going to be nice to you and everyone's going to be honest and, you know, and, um, you know, I've had to toughen up, you know, a lot over the years. So it is sort of water off a duck's back now, you know, but, you know, I, I remember driving over the Dartford Bridge 10 o'clock one Friday night, I got a phone call, didn't know it was, picked it up. You all had to shit, mate, put the phone down like that. And you think, I'm just trying to earn a living. I'm not, I'm not forcing you to, 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 order the, to buy our LEDs or use our kit or whatever. And I think that that's, I know it comes with being in the public domain and everything else, but you, things like that, yeah, they do bother you. I think you, you'd have to be, you know, I'd have to be made of stone if, they, if you said they don't bother you. Um, and I'm not this, I don't, I'm not a, like a wind-up merchant where I, I want to I want to goad them just for the sake of it and give it back, and that's not me at all. Um, you know, I like to think I've not really got got a nasty bone in me. You know, yeah, I get aggrieved at things, but I'm not spiteful. You know, so so yeah, when you when you you get talked about in that regard and you get things like that phone call, yeah, it does um, it does sting, but it stings less and less as the years go on. Is that is that why you've sort of purposely stayed away from social media? I've stayed away from social media um, because of the negative aspects associated with it, the, the trolls, the haters, particularly Facebook. I've obviously heard what goes on, you know, with, with some of our other people and the grief they come to. Um, and I love the fact that our own um, supporters defend us and or defend them and defend me, I'm sure, as well. And And... That's you know that has far more impact than us going back and trying to defend ourselves, you know. Um, so yeah, I've kept away from social media because of that, and also half of my fishing life's in front of the camera or in the public domain. I don't want my entire life to be in the public domain. I just don't, you know. Um, you know, my private life and my family life are sacred, and I I want to have as as much of that away from uh, the spotlight as humanly possible. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram, um, you know, not as me, so I can observe. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it's, um, you know, I've, I've fallen foul of, of that sort of, uh, that platform of speaking out when I shouldn't have spoken out and um, got severely got my fingers burned with that. And I, I learned very, very quickly what that, that whole world can be like. And again, there's a lot of there's a lot of very uh, Neanderthal, spiteful, um, you know, sort of uh, aggressive people on there. That if they met you face to face, they would not say any of them things to you that they say online, um, which is cowardly in my opinion. If someone came up to me at a show and told me exactly what they thought of them and why they thought it, I'd be like, fair play, mate. If that's your opinion, then then fine. But to hide you know, behind these things and, and destroy people, you know, f for the sake of it, I just think it, it's so it's so shallow, you know. How important is the, uh, the converse of that in a way? How important is it that you 
bring like a, effectively joy into people's lives with your, with the TV that you made, the, you know, the, the opportunities you give them to to improve their angling. Is that mm. something that still motivates you despite the fact that you've kind of made it in inverted commas? Um, yeah, making a difference to people is the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, I know it sounds like a cliche, and you know, but but it really, it really, really does, and it always has. You know, when I, fir when I very first started, I wanted to be wealthy. You know, I was really ambitious. You know, and I wanted money in the bank, and I, I came from absolutely nothing. You know, I, I used to have to turn my car off and roll down the hills at the end of the month before I got paid when I worked for NatWest. It was like 450 quid a month I used to earn and pay my rent and everything else. So I, and I've never forgotten that. Forgotten that. So. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I could step right back from it and, and live a life of Riley, really, but that, that doesn't, I, I've got no interest in that whatsoever in, you know, um, living a sort of flash lifestyle or anything. I just love making a difference. And when, you know, when you're party to something where you really have made a difference to someone and they feel, you either observe it or they feel compelled to come up and tell you so, that's the best feeling in the world. You know, I've just done a couple of weeks bailiffing out at Gigantica where I did the proper bailiffing job. So I did, did the toilets and showers twice a day and, you know, I, I tidied up around the, around the clubhouse and swept it all out and did the tables and did the fish, fish photography and all that. And I loved it, absolutely, because your, your party to somebody catching their PB almost every single day of your working life, and it, at the very least you get brilliant pictures for them that they're spellbound by, and at best, you've coached them to that capture. What an amazing opportunity to do that every day of your working life, to be around that buzz, you know, when someone's caught a big one, and you're around that buzz almost daily, that's, that's a proper shot in the arm, you know? So that's really, for me, that's the pinnacle of, of, um, of making a difference to people. Um, and if I can do that, you know, a lot of my job, I, you know, I might, I might be filming for a week, and that gets seen by three, four hundred thousand people a year later, and you might meet a couple of them that have seen it that have really enjoyed it, and that's about the only feedback you get, really. So, quite a lot of the work is, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of effort, and the, and the the reward with regards to the feedback doesn't come from many many months afterwards. But I do keep focusing on that when I'm when I'm doing a film. Yeah, you know, I'm always. I do get nervous still, first thing in the morning, and when we haven't done anything yet, or if it's going badly, and I just focus on that guy that's watching. How can I put as many fish in his landing net as possible? And that 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 overrides the nerves, and I just crack on with that, you know. So, so yeah, that is that is fundamental. And do you would you sort of transfer that into your uh, the way you run the company as well? Because just, just as there are many people who rely on, on corded gear to help them catch, there's a, there's a lot of guys here and girls who kind of rely on you for their yeah. launches. You know, how, how much does that weigh, weigh on you and how much does that keep you going? The responsibility of a lot of people working for you, yeah, does, does, um, is a weight on your shoulders. You know, um, if it wasn't a weight, you wouldn't care, you know. But, but I think it's a manageable weight because um, one, you know the companies continue to do well um you know we're very financially strong so it's not like we're worrying about letters coming from the bank and not being able to pay people's wages so um so in that respect i've designed it in such a way that it's not a big financial worry but the yeah the re you know but um at the same time, you know, some of my proudest moments are when we've done a, a, a day at an exhibition somewhere and we're all in the restaurant together and there's a big long table of 25 people and they're all ripping it out of each other and all laughing and joking and I'm thinking, this is because of me. All these people are together because of my little pipe dream making a few leads all them years ago and it's, it, that, that's the proudest times for me. Just, and I often just sit back and watch it all going on. Um, and um, that means far more than numbers on a balance sheet, far, far more. And also when, when we're at shows and I see, I step back from the caller stand at, at times and look and every single person on every single face of that show is talking to someone and sharing their knowledge and, you know, and, and that guy's going away with something that he didn't have before and he's fishing um, and he might catch a cart because of it. And I've, that's, you know, to see all those people banging the same drum as me is great. How... Um Sort of paternalistic do you think you are towards your staff Dan? It, is there a point where 
can they all come to you? Uh, are you in their lives if, if they need you to be? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm in, I'm in everybody's lives to the extent of other bosses, I would say. Um, I, because I'm fiercely independent myself, I, I grew up as a fiercely independent kid, um, I, I, my, my levels of empathy are probably not as, as high as they would be in other people. And it's not that I don't, I don't care, because I really do care, but I'm, I'm so used to fending for myself, um, I, I let other people do that as well, and let them fend for themselves. But, you know, when, when the chips are down and somebody needs me, then absolutely I am there. And um, I would like to think that everybody knows me um, as a decent human being first and a boss second. That's what I would hope. Um, and I would be very disappointed if somebody felt that I wasn't going to listen to their point of view and, um, and do whatever I could to assist. And that may not mean giving them what they want, um, but, but I, would, I would certainly do everything I could to, you know, to help if, if, if need be. Just on the, I'd probably put this before that, that last one, but what do you see, what do you think when you see the, say, uh, not even necessarily fishing because it would be too specific, corporate culture generally, companies getting sold to venture capitalists, let's say, like you could have sold up and made even more money down the Yeah. I could have sold up. Yeah, I had, um, um, we're getting inquiries all the time now. I think that the, the Fox being sold and, um, and uh, Preston being sold has sort of um, highlighted the profitability of fishing manufacturers to venture capitalists. Um, uh, for me personally, uh, you know, like I said, Calder, Calder, you know, was my baby. I've got, I've got my own baby now, a real one, um, and it is a different, completely different feeling. But as an analogy, yeah, Calder always was my baby, and um, uh, you know, selling it would be like selling a child, you know. And I just couldn't. I, I had somebody ring me up, and you know, from the city, and wanted to sit down with us a long time ago, when we were still at the other premises, probably ten years ago, and. Um, you know, that it was a great big American company and they were in outdoor sports or outdoor sort of leisure and they wanted to break into the fishing market and we'd been put forwards, which is a lovely compliment. You know, and I said, I said to the guy who's a merchant banker and I said, uh, or investment banker, I said, have you got kids? And he said, yeah. I said, how much would you sell your kids for? <laughs> and he was like, sorry, what? And I said, well, how much would you sell your kids for? He said, oh, there's no amount of money in the world. And I said, well, cool as my baby. And that's exactly how I feel about it. And yeah, I could have sold up and been sitting on a beach somewhere, but I'd be bored out of my brains for one. And two, I wouldn't be working with Damien and Woody and Aris and, you know, Spooner and Ali and Tom and, you know, the, all the, you know, all the people from Call to Europe and everything, you know, all, you know, such a brilliant bunch of people here. And, and, Selling Corda would be like selling my friendship with them. And it just, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I live a very comfortable life. I don't want for anything because I don't have extravagant taste. I want to I want to turn up on Monday morning at the lake I'm fishing and there's only one other bloke there. And I've seen one show on the wind and, you know, and I'm going to get in that swim and I know I'm going to catch a few. That's the thing that I long for. Not, not holiday homes and boats and all that gubbins. That don't mean nothing to me. Um, so, yeah. Do you think you, you've lost anything down along the way? Like, was there another route you could have taken in which you would have had other things in life that you now can't have that have gone innocence? No, I don't think I've lost anything. Um, no, not at all. Not at all. I, um, no. Uh, I think I. I I can say I worked too hard at the start and did too many hours at the start and you know and obviously that that's ended relationships and um you know but I'm with the most amazing girl now and um we're right for each other you know and um so in that respect you know I've ended up with the right person that matches my lifestyle and my sort of motivations and everything so no I wouldn't I wouldn't say uh no I you know I wish I'd uh, been a bit wiser over the years, but um, with things. But you can't you can't learn from stuff until you make a mistake, you know. And you know, uh, a lot of these things you can't you can't possibly foresee how somebody else is going to act. And, and and when it's to your detriment, you have to sort of um, 
you know, sort of work out how to best deal with the situation and then move on from it. But, but lost anything, no. What about your angling, Dan? Um, you, you, do, you, you would in, certainly be doing different fishing if you weren't doing what you're doing, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I've had some amazing opportunities to fish in places that I probably never would have got to had I not been in the trade and had I not been as connected as I am across the whole of Europe, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I just can't say how my fishing would have evolved. Um, you know, what, what's, uh, you know, I've become, I've gone from being a big hit sort of angler and fishing waters that really suited that style of fishing to being more, uh, you know, a lower stock, you know, lot less people, not so big fish sort of angler and, and stepping away from the crowds, you know, sacrificing perhaps 10 pound on a fish as an average weight. So I'm catching, you know, maybe 40 pounders as a, an absolute maximum now where I could fish on lakes where I would be fishing for 50 pounders easily. But I, that doesn't interest me that like just uh, being shoulder to shoulder with other people and no etiquette and all that sort of thing. It doesn't just doesn't float my boat at all for the sake of an extra couple of pound on a, a set of scales, you know. Um, so. Uh, I'm lucky I've got some very privileged um, filming fishing where we get, you know, we get opportunities to fish places where there's not that many other people fishing or no one at all, and that's great. And then in my, in my own fishing, I'm just, I'm just sort of hiding away and doing stuff that, um, that turns me on, you know. Dan, you spoke earlier about your deep desire initially to, you know, uh, further your financial situation. Yep. Um, and how that's changed. Um, what what drives you today? Um, what drives me today is it's just um, affecting people in a positive way, making a difference to people. You know, improving their um, their enjoyment of their pastime. You know, time is our most valuable commodity, isn't it? And you know, if I can help someone get more out of that um, through sharing my knowledge or or products or making you know stuff available to people that isn't. That, that's the thing that really drives me. I haven't got a, a burning desire now to move into loads of other areas in fishing, um, you know, uh, or move into loads of other product ranges or anything. I think if we can make something better than is already out there, um, and, and it's generally going to be a step, genuinely going to be a step forward, then I want to do it. So there, there are no limits in, in that respect. There, there are limits, obviously, with our partnerships with other companies, you know, people like Mainline, um, uh, Delkim as well. Um, you know, those, those people, I just want to help them be more and more successful and be used by more and more people. So there's no way that I would be jumping into bait or into bite alarms or just to make a few quid, you know. And there's, people have said to me all the way through the business, oh, you could put Calder on anything and it'd sell, you know. And yeah, that is true. but. The reason it would sell is because we don't put cold on everything. We only put it on the things we genuinely believe in and we think are better than what's out there. Um, so, you know, stuff will come along. You know, when when the when I first did the throwing sticks, you know, it was seeing Frank Warwick and, and his mate Oz using them um, over at Linear and just never being able to use one before myself. And then I'm giving it to me and me putting a bait under a jar instantly. My catapult like went into my bag and I'm like, give us that here, I want to use it. And that's why we called it the easy stick because I found it easy to use. Um, and, and you can't tell what's going to, round the, going to be around the corner. I might go fishing next week and see something spellbinding that's nothing to do with our product range at all. and think that's really good. You know, maybe we can work with this person um, or come up with something myself. You know, all the, you know, all the other minds that are here as well might come up with something um, that's an absolute worldie, and then we'll move into it, you know, providing it's not directly competing with one of our sort of, um, you know, our, our real close friends in the industry, then, um, yeah, the, the, the sky's the limit, really. But I don't, I don't have a desire um, to have the company be a certain turnover or me have a certain well for... You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I would want the company to carry on being successful, you know, carry on having happy employees, uh, carry on growing, um, being stronger and stronger, and, and just keep affecting more and more people. How would you like to, um, or what do you think your employees think of you, Dan? What do I think my employees think of me? Um, 
I would I would like to think that they uh, they think I'm a genuine guy, um, that I care um, about them, and that I, you know I care about the whole thing, um, and that they are valued. You know they're really appreciated. Um, um, I would hope that obviously some probably more than others because I work more closely with some people than others. Um, I would like to think that they they think I'm pretty normal and pretty down to earth, and um, you know, and are not off, you know, uh, living in some parallel dimension where I'm God, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, just a, just a, a normal bloke who's you know who, you know, puts the effort in and gets the reward, you know.